And okay, it's recording. Cool. All right, guys. So uh, we're supposed to begin with a quick synopsis of the case. So Mary Griffin, who is the vice president of Derby Foods, is having a problem with uh, with one of her employees, a uh, Simon. Here's the guy's name. Simon York. Simon York. Simon York. He's he's been kind of a little bit uh, uh, not a very good team player kind of thing, and so she's trying to decide what to do. And she she's invited him in for a uh, to talk with him in her office. So and that's kind of where it leaves off, I believe. Um, uh, so that's that's basically synopsis, right? Uh, I mean, Simon York has been a really good employee, and he's done a lot of really good things for the company. But obviously, a company can't kind of tolerate certain behaviors. I mean, I think that kind of makes sense. Uh, so we have to we have to try and and just kind of go over some facts and a culture and. Uh, so I'll just kind of ask, ask some questions, I guess. Does anybody else have anything else you want to add before we go to the questions? I don't. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so first off, uh, it asks, um, so the issue is, you know, Simon York's behavior. Um, okay. Okay. Um, uh, and how it, how it kind of affects and is inconsistent with company culture, but why would y'all think that this is important? Why why is it important that that you have a behavior that's consistent with company culture? Well, I'll say it goes right back to what we're reading a little bit about trust and being consistent. Oh, yeah. Mhm. Mm that's true. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's that's a really good point. I think like the reputation of a company generally is reflected on the management. And so if management isn't living the culture the company wants to reflect, then that's not how employees or other people are going to see it. So, yeah, it's really true. Yeah. And that would create like, like Sabrina mentioned from the reading, now that, that would go back to like trust and like how there, it would create distrust among uh, from employees to management. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. That's true. I remember um, watching a video or reading a case in one of my other classes about Zappos and how they're, um, they really, oh, what's the word? Their, their culture is really important to them, like so important that you have up to like six weeks and then they'll even offer you money to quit if you like don't fit their like culture. And so obviously... They, they think that culture is so important in, I think it's in the way people interact with each other. Because if people aren't interacting well and they don't feel like they have the same culture, then things aren't going to get done very well. Just like like the book like Sabrina was talking about, you know, trust goes down, speed goes down, cost goes up. You know, it's bad for the company overall in many aspects. Yeah, no, that's 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 exactly it. Like, I can't. That's crazy that <laughs> if if you don't fit in, they'll give you money to quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they like they give all this incentive. Like, if you want this money, you can quit, and then we'll pay you to do it. And so, like, making sure that they have people who want to be there. I did that last semester too, and it's not like I can't remember how much money it is, but it's not like a little bit. It's it's a pretty significant amount of money. Oh, it, yeah, it's like thousands of dollars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Really? Gosh, yeah. Dang. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that in my current job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, that, that's really cool. So yeah, obviously, like company culture plays a huge part in uh, in making sure that a company runs um, properly. And this is like an organizational effectiveness class, so that would make sense that it it like is part of the grand scheme of, of being an effective organization. So uh, so an another question that they have on here is like, what do you believe the culture is at Derby Foods? Like if you could pinpoint it or, or describe it. Well, they don't really talk about it a lot, but you can kind of tell yeah. just from the differences that are noted with his team and how they seem to be not quite as 
um, happy when he corrects them in the meeting that maybe the, the culture is typically a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't know, a little more team oriented, a little bit less, uh, I, don't, I guess, accusatory, I guess, uh, you know, pointing fingers when there's air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's probably like laid back, you know, not, not, maybe not too much. They get business done. And, and obviously like, like he, Simon has been a good, you know, a good employee and has helped to, to bring, bring in sales and stuff from his, from his abilities. But like, I think they're a bit more laid back. It seems where it's just kind of like, okay, you know, mistakes happen. No matter what business you're in, mistakes are going to happen and you can't flip out every time something small happens. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I see mommy. Mommy. Okay, let's see. Another question here is what are corporate politics and how can it affect culture? <laughs> corporate politics. I feel like if like most people don't like politics, so depending on like what the corporation's doing if uh, the employees kind of get disgruntled with the politics and they're not going to try to like withhold anything that they're trying to push, if that makes sense. Like if they want a certain culture, if people hate the politics that the management is using per se, then it might be hard for them to help their employees to live the culture, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. That's a really good point. It hey. seems like, Anybody? sorry, go ahead, Sabrina. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk too much. Uh, I was going to say, it, honestly, like, I think this case is just like almost right out of our book. There's just so much um, corporate politics and like that, it goes back to trust. I mean, if you don't trust somebody, you're going side politics. You're you're covering your backside by going behind somebody else to do something extra that shouldn't have to be done. Um, and that's kind of what York is building with his team and also with the production. They're not going to trust him. He doesn't trust them now. Um, it's just going to escalate if he doesn't change something. Mm -hmm. When it seems like nobody could talk to him but Mary. Like um, the original guy who approached Mary, like he couldn't go talk to him even though he was a director of something. I don't know. Like, yeah. it seemed like nobody could communicate with each other unless you went to the top and unless you went to the big guys. And I don't, I don't know if that's normal, if they do that for everything, or if, if this was just like a special case. It could be that that's, that's pretty standard. I think the thing, the situation here too is, it's not just that they need to communicate with the other department. Is that he needs to be corrected and how he's behaving, and generally it's it's better handled through his whoever. Because ideally, he's got a mentorship relationship with Mary, and so that's going to be best handled through her. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you know companies have kind of their organizational hierarchy, and so uh, with most, like at least in, in corporations I've worked for before, like like in most things, if you need to talk with another department, it's fine. You communicate everything's good. But if there's a problem or someone needs to be corrected, then yeah, you have to go to their, you know, to their manager, and that's what and that's something that Simon should have done instead of going and yelling at the production team. That's not his team. That's not someone who he has any managerial uh, stewardship over, and so he he kind of broke that that line that organizational line and and came to somebody else's department and yelled at their guys, and that's like a huge huge no no. And so, well, at the very, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, at the very least, he should have talked to that director, and not gone and chewed out his team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just, uh, just to keep things, I guess, more fair. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Like you know, I'm in, I'm in purchasing, and if someone from you know the billing department came and started yelling at me, I'd be like, who, who are you? I don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> what are you yeah, doing? Exactly. <laughs> Unless there's a, an established relationship there, yeah, I think it needs to go through the proper channels, you know. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. And I think that's, I mean, you know, corporate politics has kind of like a negative thing. Like, like Zach, like you were saying, politics in general kind of makes people be like, oh, it's, I don't want to do that. But, uh, right. but I think in, in like from an organizational kind of, kind of situation where you have these, these corporate politics or this hierarchy of, you know, if you have a problem with me, you go and you talk to my manager and, and they'll talk to me kind of thing. Unless you're on equal ground, you know, like, right. um, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Well, and I, I, it depends too, because I know I've had times where I, um, I was, I'd have directors, I'd have vice presidents come talk to me if they had a problem, but it wasn't like a, hey, Sabrina, you're misbehaving. It was a, hey, I need, I've got a question about some report you did, or, oh, yeah. um, hey, I think you should do this a little bit differently. It wasn't like, it was, but it was more of a conversational thing. It wasn't a, they were coming to me out, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. And again, there were there was an established relationship of respect there. So even though they weren't my direct report or I wasn't theirs, um, it was still okay. But it was, like I said, an established thing where they knew they could talk to me. I knew who they were. I knew what their their part in all this was, and it was an understood thing. So it was fine. Okay. Yeah, and I think that that's important. You have to have that like underlying foundation of respect, or at least a, some sort of relationship before you can just go and start. Screaming at someone. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, hopefully you won't be screaming at them anyway. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, any, I guess we can just move on to another question here. Um, uh, let's see. So what are some recommendations that we have to maintain, change, or build on the existing culture, like in a positive way? Sorry, what was that? Uh, <laughs> My daughter so, woke up from her nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so what are some, some recommendations that we could give to uh, Mary or anybody in this company to maintain change or build uh, on the existing culture in a positive way? So one thing that I had thought, um, I've dealt with people in the past that are kind of quick to get angry. And so I feel like calling him in, into her office and just like accusing him all of a sudden of all these things could really like heat up that meeting a bit. Yeah. So I thought a good thing that they could do is like if she calls him in, she could just tell him like, hey, I heard this and like have no hint of accusation towards him and kind of get his side of the story. But the whole a big section of this case study, they talked about like the good things he's doing for the company. So I think if she can try to like bring those out to like ease the blow and then help him build on his already strengths and make him realize like, hey, there's better ways to manage people. You're great at managing your job, but managing people like let's work on this aspect of your job so that all around he can um, he can do all aspects of his job a little bit better, I guess. No, that's really important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I mean, because apparently he has the, you know, uh, the ability to know blow up and mm -hmm. go on an angry tirade so we don't want that to happen again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, it definitely needs to be handled carefully and I don't know. And I and I think both sides need to be open. Like both Mary and you know, just like you said, Zach, to see his point of view too. But yet still bring things to light and bring things to his attention in a kind way. Right. I think you need to be like perfectly straightforward and don't beat around the bush so that there's no confusion about anything, but also like try not to make the situation worse either. Yeah. So I've got like two quotes that I used in my case study that go along with what you guys are saying. Um, the first one is that um, where this, from? this is the one from some article in Forbes that I found. Yeah, so this one just says, um, before correcting an employee, it's best to get an idea 
to get the facts in order to reduce bias and thinking errors, when, which when left unchecked can strain the employee manager relationship. And I think that goes back to not just taking the production director's side of the story, but getting York's input on it too. Um, and then the second quote uh, says, by focusing on facts instead of feelings, you can keep some of the emotional charge out of the conversation. There should be no ambiguity around the action and the results expected. So, I mean, it just goes back to what you guys are saying and just making sure that you're not bringing York in there to accuse him of anything. You're bringing him in there to coach and to mentor him and to help him to see um, where he could have a more productive team and more productive relationship with other departments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, it sounds like if he's like kind and doesn't blow up at people that he could really have an amazing team and they could really accomplish a lot. Mm -hmm. If if they all trusted each other, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I think he's got good intentions. Yeah. I mean, in his little part at the end of the case study, it says that you know he was using like specifically the the, the meeting where he corrected his team. Um, he was using that as an opportunity to demonstrate that he's got high standards for himself and for his team. And I think his intentions are good, but the way he um, the way he communicated it was not. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah, it was very awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it made him look like, um, this is another, another quote I really liked. Um, this is actually from our book. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, you really make me look smart if I actually could find these things, right? <laughs> um, shoot. I can't find it now, but um, basically, it's like it makes it look like he's out to make himself look good at the expense of others. Is what it kind of, is what it looked like. Yeah, and it and did. It definitely that's did. That's gonna make his team completely distrust him and his intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, if I was on his team, I would think that you know, if he's willing to throw me under the bus for this right. little thing, and I kind of like, like you know, when I have a when I have something good happen, is he gonna take that? Is he gonna you know take the glory or the credit? So. Right. I mean, it's like I, I had a manager that I worked for for a while and she would be like, no, you need to do it this way. And she'd be totally in my face about it. And then uh, it would come up in a meeting. She'd be like, why'd you do it that way? You shouldn't have done it that way. I'm like, you told me to do it that way. What are you talking about? But you know, it, really, it really doesn't inspire trust, man. I, I don't know what that, yeah. Man. Yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> either, either you're going senile or... You're trying to make me look bad just for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, all good points. All really good points. Um, okay. Let's see. I have a five-year-old, so I feel you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Okay, uh, so the last two things I think we're, we're gonna, we'll discuss kind of Mary's role in establishing culture, Simon's role in establishing and maintaining the culture, and then we'll kind of conclude with that, I think, if that's okay with everybody. Uh, so with Mary, um, what, how is she supposed to, like, like, let's see, how do I put this? The two questions based are how is she supporting the culture and how is she working against the culture and what she's doing or what she has done? I don't think she is. I mean, I, I think she's aware for the most part of what's going on in the team and she's maybe she should have said something after the incident in his in the meeting um, just yeah. to make sure that see what was going on. But at this point, I think it's it's go time for her. She's, she's definitely got to, this is her moment to act or to fail to act. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I think, point. I think one mistake that she's made is the fact that they both have two totally different agendas for this meeting because he has no clue what the meeting is about. So she just had her secretary go and tell him that she's going to meet with him. And the secretary said that it's something to do with the, the X Games or whatever with his new branding opportunities. Right. 
but she is going to talk to him about how he handled the warehouse issue. So he's going to go in thinking that it's like an accountability meeting, whereas that's not what it's about. So it's going to totally throw off the meeting. And I feel like it's going to like, I don't know how that'll affect him. So I think she needs to be a little more specific when she wants these meetings, like maybe send mm. him a memo so that they don't have that miscommunication. Mm. It's going to like blindside him. Right. Yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, because I think it does come down to the the Winter X Games project because all of the errors that he's flipped out about have to do with that project, and every time he said you're jeopardizing my project, so it could just be that in her perspective she's looking at it from a um, the means to the end. You know how you're you're. I like what you're doing with this project, but I don't like how you're getting there. So it's still an accountability for that project because all the incidents have been revolving around that one project, or at least all the ones we know about. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I, I do think so. I, I think it'd be good to because I mean I understand where she's coming from by saying it's a project, but I also see Zach's point of view as saying like you know this guy's coming in and thinking he's probably going to get and what did he say when we had his little internal thing? It basically said that he thought it was. Like he's he's gonna discuss how how things can be better and how how other right. people can work according to his thing and and so it's gonna it's gonna kind of take him as oh this is a I'm in trouble meeting instead of a yeah. uh, let me tell you about how good I'm doing yeah. meeting. Well, and I think he, that all is gonna depend on how uh, Mary handles it. I mean, because I think there's a lot of good things that she does she need to you know give him props for. Um, because he, you know, he seems to be doing a really good job. I think Cameron, who was said earlier, but he's really good on the creative side and the promotions and all that stuff. It's just, you know, his new role in managing people that's causing some issues. Right. Yeah, I agree. Anything else anybody want to add? Nope. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go on to Simon then. So, what is uh, so how is Simon supporting the culture and how is he working against the culture? This one's a bit more obvious, but we can still discuss it. <laughs> well, obviously, he is not working within the culture because I don't think their culture is to go out and yell at different departments. <laughs> um, and he's obviously, you know, like we talked about earlier, not going through the right authorities to get there and report his problem. He's just doing it himself. Um but I think in his mind, he's trying to create a good culture of people who are responsible and accountable and living up to high standards. So I think his things are just handled not very well. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> I think one thing that maybe he's doing to add to the culture is it says like he re-energized the 150 year old brand and uh, like he's he's kind of helped them move on to like more modern stuff which is where the world's going like social media and things like that so I think um, maybe like he is hurting the culture as far as his people management but on the other hand he's like helping to evolve the way that they do things so that they can stay in business. So I think that's a positive. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Definitely. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've kind of already discussed about how Mary should approach it and, you know, kind of what she should cover. Um, she definitely has to, I mean, she has to address the concern of, belligerence and like <laughs> you can't just go yelling at people uh, but she does need like like y'all mentioned before we she needs to address it in like a calm and collected way and not I mean in some way she kind of has to point a finger and say hey you, you can't do that anymore but she you know she doesn't have to tear them down or, or be extremely negative just try and correct and and give some positive or some criticism of, of how he could be a better manager because like you mentioned I think it is Sabrina like you know he's great at his job he's 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 a great brand manager but he is he is uh, 
uh, not a very good manager. And so that's those are the skills that he needs to work on in order to become a better employee employee and manager for for Derby Foods. Can you can you take the whistle away from him? Go ahead and just take it away. <laughs> but yeah, so. <laughs> No, I agree. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I think we gotta be done. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Here, uh, why don't we go ahead and finish up? Um, this was a good discussion. One thing I wanted to just ask, did any of y'all know that this discussion was going to be on the company's culture? Because I didn't just get that from the no. case study. No? No. Okay. Because, I mean, the case right. study doesn't that say a lot specifically about the culture. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. very um, – it, there's, you know, a little indirect things, but it's very little. But, I mean, it's only two-page case study. So. Yeah, it's yeah, very this, short. <laughs> this is the shortest case study I've ever seen. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. After last week's and then going to this one, I was like, oh, wait, what? That's yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. It's like sometimes they're harder if they're shorter because you have right. to like just guess and and right. kind of put right. things in. Yeah, you have to make a lot more assumptions. Yeah, for real. <laughs> that makes fun. All right. Well, okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating. Real quick, before we end, I think we need to figure out who's going to do uh, the group, who's going to lead the discussion next week. So, anybody want to? Do we need to do to all of them? I think, like. Oh yeah, we have like something to fill out, right? Yeah, I actually oh, have. Yeah. A, if you want me to. Oh, fill you do. It out. Wonderful. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Okay. So is this is this week three or is this week four? This is week three. I think this is three. Oh, Michael, do that. Okay. Um, I'll do it next week. Perfect. Pull that out there. And I can do the week after that. And then I'll do the week after that. My wife is due the twenty second, so there could oh, be a hey. there could be a curveball in all this. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Congrats! Thanks. That's really cool. <laughs> So Katie, I don't remember your husband's name, but do you want me to put him down for week seven, and then we'll just rotate? Yeah, which week is that? We will, um, let's see, this is three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he can probably do seven. I think week eight, we're going to be in Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> so, we won't be there that week. <laughs> okay, and then do I like just to start? Doing, so. Do you want me just to start it over so then um, Mike would be week eight and then I'll do nine? Yeah. Let me see. I think that'll be perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, is everybody, so I know this time wasn't what everybody signed up for. So I work, okay, hold on just a second. Okay. Uh, I work, I work uh, like 7.30 to 4.30 every day and it, well, four o'clock, and then it takes me about forty-five minutes to get home. So I get home around four forty-five on weekdays. So anytime after that, I can make it work. Just whatever works best for y'all. Well, and I don't know if you guys looked ahead, but um, the one for next week, we actually have to turn it in, like on Tuesday night. Oh. Yeah, I saw that there's like two parts or something to it. Yeah, I just looked at the little yeah, notice on notice this week. Bible stuff. Instead of like the case study write up, we have to do a uh, discussion and then do a, a different summary. I, I just looked at the note. I didn't look at the whole assignment. Oh, the prep okay. for week four. Yeah, that oh, note. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, we okay. need to meet earlier. Uh, so I'm free every day after 4.45. Um, obviously, a little bit later gives me a little bit of time to get home and settled but but i can i can meet anytime after 4 45 during the weekdays i'm i'm at work and i can't i can't meet uh but then saturdays whenever so whenever y'all want to do it just it's kind of my schedule yeah i can do evenings except tuesdays at seven i'm a scout leader and i've got scouts on tuesdays so nice okay. other than that i'm free in the evenings so I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, our young women's presidency, and then I'm also the state camp, camp director. 
So we have Wednesday nights, Thursday nights that I've got snake meetings. Tuesday, Monday, Thursday. So I got Wednesday night and Thursday night I've got meetings. Um, and then there's like a small window like like today from four to five or whatever we're really on it. Four more time, five years time, I guess. Um, okay. It just depends on the week because, like, right now my husband's off today, so I happen to be able to uh, get away from the five year old. <laughs> just depends. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be having the same problem you're having. <laughs> <laughs> this will probably be a, a constant problem. I'm me. laughing because, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I feel for you because I know you're going to get off the and be like, oh, ah! <laughs> At least that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. <laughs> um, so do y'all want to do so? So then, was it Monday? Every well, mon Monday or Tuesday? Then next, why well, we have to turn it on Tuesday of next week? I said by mid the midweek due date, which has been Tuesday for everything else, right? Gosh dang! I know. Okay. I, I don't really see how Tuesday is midweek. I think it should be Wednesday. But anyway, it's a different discussion. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm I'm free any of those days, like I said. Any day after 4.45, I'm good, so. Yeah, Kyle and I should be good then, either of those days, Monday or Tuesday night. Okay. Oh, here, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'll see Peter in a minute. I'm almost done. <laughs> see, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well then, let's just say uh, Monday work for everybody. Yeah, I get yeah. Monday. Monday. Monday works. And I Sabrina, think, will Monday work? Yeah. Did you say um, five, or do we want to do it a little later? Uh, whenever, like any any time after four forty-five works for me, at least. I'm just thinking if we can give if we can give you a little bit more time, it'd be nice, so that you don't have to rush as much. Oh, that's cool. If we want to do it like right, at, if that'll be better to y'all for y'all to do it right at five or something, because I know that y'all were all earlier, and so I'm I'm sorry that I'm kind of dragging it later. Uh, but like five o'clock is great if y'all want to do it earlier, or if you want to wait till later in the night, we can do that too. Any strong opinions? What was that? Is it any strong opinions? Um, uh, I, I prefer earlier the better, so five's cool with me. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, perfect. Five on Monday. Okay. Sounds good. Good with us. All righty, guys. Thank you for your time, and see you next week. All right. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you. Bye.